uh, sources, particularly computational neuroscience by Rajesh, Dr. Rajesh, deep learning by Andrew NG, internet resources, and, and the multiple other um, places I would have used the pictures and the diagrams which has been provided. So thereby I'm acknowledging them, right. So for this, uh, let's look into uh, the way the computation has been shifted over in the present day. Uh, probably we might have come across in either in communication network or even in the computing platform, starting from 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, it goes on, right? The, the computation strategies move on. But what's happening right now, people always speak about, or the current trend is people speak about IoT, machine learning, artificial intelligence. All these ideas are cloud computing. So these are the hot topics, both with respect to academic as well as, as well as with respect to industry. Now, what are we trying to do is, let's try to analyze what's happening with this and what should be the next to move in the computing paradigm. So, of course, everyone would be coming across all this IoT, ML, AI, or cloud computing, everything. They are basically a step forward where we are trying to make a machine to be more intelligent. Ultimately, we are trying to do something like this. I'm trying to duplicate a human being which is having more amount of intelligence, decision-making, learning. So whatever I feel unique in the human being, I am trying to incorporate that to a machine via different techniques. Say it could be a machine learning technique where I make my machine to learn itself from the ambience or the environment under which it has been put in. Like an usual human being does. Say if a human being start riding a cycle, couple of times, any child, if you, I mean, the children, they when they start riding a cycle, couple of times they fell down. Later on, you could see the brain neuron has been mapped up in such a way that what should be the angle I should work on? What should be the force which I should pedal it? What should be the speed which I should pedal it? You could see inherently, even without knowing, your brain captures all this information and train up those neurons to effectively put my cycle vertically across and balance myself in that cycle and make forward to, I mean, make me to move forward. So at the outset, it may look, it's a basic property of the human being. But if I am trying to exhibit the same thing on a machine, really that becomes a challenging job for a design engineer. Means making a machine to understand what's happening around, how to learn from the environment, how to train up on behalf of a particular skill set. So all this becomes a challenging aspect. So in order to do this, we have a specialized way of you know, making the machine to be a human being. That's what we try to do with machine learning or incorporating intelligence with the AI or computing on the edge or trying to transfer those data to the cloud and uh, trying to compute at the cloud and get back those data, connecting all my environment with the sensors via IoT. So if you look at the whole picture, what are we trying to do is exactly trying to replace a human being with some sort of machines which could incorporate the intelligence of the human being. On top of this, we say data science data science. What is this data science? Probably you know, today, the hard cake for any industry, the thing what we thought could be a junk, become a, the topmost requirement for data science industry. Probably if someone says, I have, record, I have recorded the last 50 years of the climatic variation across a particular region, probably uh, some 10, 15 years back, that would not have gained the attention of any of the industry. Presently, if you go and say, I have an authenticated data across any domain 
for any statistics i have a data for a very long duration that fetches a great importance for the people who are in the data science industry because they use the huge junk of data they try to you know go for data analysis interpretation comes up with a prediction strategy what could be the next or how what could happen in the near future based upon the earlier event which has happened so in that context now two more operation comes into picture not only we incorporate intelligence now i am making my mission to predict to what should happen means what i am trying to do is i am trying to learn certain things from the previous data and predict what should happen in the near future when i said this it seems to be quite easy means analyzing last 50 years of data and then predict what is expected to happen in the next couple of month it's not an easy one means say whether it could be a weather um, um, you know climate prediction or it could be something with respect to a product failure analysis or anywhere even it could be with the medical diagnosis of tumor diagnosis cancer diagnosis say if i am going on with some 10 lakh data of brain tumor analysis i can very well i mean i feed all those data in the machine learning algorithm i can come up with a very accurate prediction of whether this tumor belongs to a cancer tumor or else not given at the very initial stage so what i'm trying to say is so the massive data which is being available that comes as an information and it helps me for the prediction now the next question that arises here this huge volume of data where do you store it storage is a question the next point is after storing a data how will you do the data analytics data analytics when i say data analytic it means a enormous amount of mathematic computations when i say mathematic computations i in turn speak with respect to hardware that is being required for establishing that say it could be mean variance or any sort of predictions based upon a huge volume of data if that i need to do it i am expected to do huge computation also so one thing you need a huge computation the other thing you need a data storage now this is where the question comes should i make my device as an edge computing device or a cloud computing device means i store all the data on my cloud perform the computation there and get back those result and then put it on my machine say some devices which are using a edge devices they transfer the data say like something like a, a mobile phone things like that you can have an edge mode of data transfer from the machine or a controller you can transfer the data to the cloud compute there predicted then pass it back now all this whatever i say it's all with respect to a very minimal step that has been taken in the mankind to reach the precision and um, um, the ability of the human brain and what do i mean is i am keeping the ideal reference as my human being and i am trying to extract whatever future that is being processed by the human being to be incorporated in a machine why are you seeing all this right okay in this process now uh, in fact this uh, uh, no what we say this machine learning or ai all this whatever you see here has been incorporated in multiple domain probably you would have come across it could be in computer vision speech recognition game play all this now the next question is okay i do have ai machine learning deep learning all this then what do you mean by neuromorphic computing this is where
we are moving towards. What is this neuromorphic computing? Means I already know that we are incorporating intelligence into the machine. Then what this speaks about? Let me make it still more very clear. Till now, this AI, ML, all this, these are rule-based analysis or prediction making, or it could be something like problem solving. But remember, all this are based upon rule set, or you can have some other strategies too. But basically, if you see all these techniques which has been applied on the machine, they go by a rule. So, so and so is there, you can make a decision like this. So and so is there, you make a decision. Like this. It's a rule based decision making for a solution uh, in any cases. Then, in which way this is different from a neuro, uh, I mean, uh, or this neuromorphic computing is different. This is where we are trying to bring in the human brain. In fact, one of the most important organ which is least understood by the human is the human brain. Means, till date, we haven't, even I am speaking about the neuroscience, we haven't explored the capability of a human brain to less than 5%. That's what people say. Means, if you take a brain, there are millions of area where each and every area has specific specific workload that need to be computed by that brain, human brain. But as a neuroscience research, what people have done is here and there, they try to figure out, okay, cerebellum, it controls certain portion, cerebrum, it controls certain portion. Then optothalamus, it goes with something on this. Like this, very, very minimal knowledge is being till date attained by the human being on the ability of the brain. So mimicking this brain becomes the major activity. Or to make it still more very clear, let's assume that there is one mango tree. Right? Mango tree is there. And there is one person standing over here and he would like to hit this mango. Okay? So it, it takes a stone uh, just to try to throw it on the mango. Probably it might not hit. It may go either at the top or the bottom. He makes the second trial. Again, he makes third trial. Mostly somewhere around some five to say 50 trials, he could definitely hit that mango. Now the question is, it becomes a day-to-day -day activity for a normal human being. But let's assume what the brain have done. In fact, the brain, brain in turn had made an enormous calculation in this. Though we have not spelled out explicitly, first it had calculated what is the angle from the base to the mango, what should be the weight of the stone, what should be the force given to the stone and like this I can list out what is the line of sight of that person. I can list out n number of parameter which has been taken into account and that has been put up in an equation. If the angle slightly goes higher, it again takes a feedback action, feedback corrective action and go again and correct that angle and you could see the force angle, the throw, everything has been corrected. At a particular point, the stone will hit the man. So, you could see the human brain is inherently learning a lot in each and every throw from the surrounding inputs and it makes an appropriate decision. The same thing, if I am trying to make that as a robot to do this, you think about the complexity that is being involved. 
So I am expected to calculate hundreds of parameters, bringing out a machine to figure out what should be the force angle, all those things. I need to come up with an expression. So that's what we say. Now, the neuromorphic computing is typically mimicking the brain. The whole study of neuromorphic computing, neuro is nothing but neuron. Neuron is the basic cell of brain. So the neuromorphic computing is whole about understanding how your brain works, how your brain learns, and what are the inherent futures of the brain. Understanding that and trying to bring that in a hardware which will sit in real time to acquire a signal, compute a signal, make a decision based upon that. That's how uh, the study about this, we call that as neuromorphic computing. Right. Okay. So we said, in short, neuromorphic computing is nothing but a whole way of recreating the brain. Of course, we admit the fact that the whole function of the brain is not known. Whatever we know, based upon that, we are trying to create the brain model right? or in the neuroscience. Okay. When I create a model or when I create a hardware which is mimicking the brain, which is neuron, brain neuron, now I make a hardware for each and every neuron. Because neuron is the basic cell in my brain. So I create a model for a neuron, their interconnections and their decision making, learning, everything, I create a hardware. This hardware, I call it as a neuromorphic hardware. In general, we would have come across the hardware for AI, ML. Probably they are nothing but your GPU graphic processing unit or sometime even TPU by Google or something like uh, in the earlier cases we were using CPU. Moving from CPU to GPU, the main advantage is, see basically we deal with matrix. This matrix have N cross M amount of datas which is supposed to be computed. When I give that to a normal CPU machine, probably the computing power of this machine is very slow. So I need a specialized processors to compute or to work out on matrix, which are nothing but, which is a direct correlation with the image or the video, which I get it in the real time. So, a specialized hardware or processor, something like GPU, have been incorporated for most of the machine learning algorithm. That's how we do. In fact, you could see almost most of the companies who have been working with this AI ML, they would be using GPUs. When I say GPU, the it's it's nothing but uh, no a, a processor, processor with high-end computing. Let's keep it in this way. Of course, here. Uh, nowadays, there are some accelerators associated with this. Hardware accelerators, they used to call it as. Apart from GPU, they use hardware accelerators. These hardware accelerators, again, their role is to boost the computation, particularly with speech recognition, image recognition, pattern recognition, voice recognition, voice processing. Right? But on the few metrics like accuracy, programmability, energy, that is power dissipation, throughput, latency, all this are my metrics to decide whether this particular processor is efficient enough. So like this, you could say uh, there are multiple uh, companies who have been working on this deep learning algorithm which use uh, GPUs for their processing, starting from you no know, NVIDIA, Intel, all these people are 
spending a lot okay now as i said they are all more like a rule based computing network whereas if you come to this neuromorphic processes these are something which is mimicking the brain by recreating or modeling the neurons and then create a network with millions and billions of you no know, neuron models which is exactly reflecting the activities of the brain in fact intel came up with this uh, first brain inspired computing ai computing chip uh, they called it as loki this was the loki one was first launch now loki 2 has been launched in fact its capability i think it is uh, uh, it, it's integrating around 1 billion neurons in a single chip right so that's how it, it is very efficient in fact this neuromorphic computing rather than using mas they use more with membranes in fact couple of my phd students are also working on the membranes for neuromorphic circuits and this membranes have the capability of both the way it has the capability of storing a value transmitting a value computing a value in that way membranes becomes the best suit for mimicking the brain or making neuromorphic circuits in fact there are many papers we could see where uh, the usage of membranes is for neuromorphic computers again as we say the usage of are the application side where could this neuromorphic computings are being used basically uh, at multiple domain it is being used starting from industrial robots automotives military government robots mostly with respect to robotic sections wherein uh, we would like to make the robot to be more autonomous and uh, uh, more to be self learning under these conditions we are trying to incorporate this uh, neuromorphic computing processes again with respect to space right uh, in fact i believe you might be heard of the spacex spacex uh, tesla the owner uh, can someone let me know the owner for spacex and tesla musk sir yes elon musk in yes. fact he has created one more project which is neuralink maybe if you google it you will be getting this neuralink project he made an implantable neurochip ic which can be implemented in the human brain of course there are many ethical issues coming up but still he has many crazy ideas out of that one project is this one neuralink project the same has been in the trial with the uh, pigs and the monkey in fact uh, that was also in news uh, some few months back we could see that neuralink project has been uh, they were coming up with uh, no Uh, a small neurochip ic which could be planted implanted on your head uh, with a very small micro it's like a stitching machine is there it's a minute uh, operation which could be carried out on your head and it could be implanted it and externally you could tap the signal and control it so particularly those people who have um, you know neuro diseases or neuro disorders are uh, something like uh, where you have you no know, artificial limb those type of medical requirement is needed this project plays a very vital role right so in spacex they are also they are interpreting too much of intelligence in that by using neuromorphics and this neuralink and healthcare uh, definitely this is playing an important role with respect to healthcare uh, with diagnosis diagnosis of chronic diseases and uh, prediction analysis on this area 
this uh, neuromorphic computing processes chipsets are being are in the initial stage or in the initial stage of usage of course in addition to ai as a next step towards ai chip this neuromorphic chip has been implemented in many places so that uh, it, it's going to capture the healthcare industry to a great extent in fact if you look at the uh, market survey product market survey report it says that um, you no know, around 20 to 30 percent of the market is going to be with the neuromorphic computing um, in 2025 so that was the prediction in some on some billion amount has been quoted maybe you can cross check let's see so all this applications as a great uh, you said with the neuromorphic drug delivery testing all this laboratory yeah that's what uh, the whole thing is about uh, making or bringing human brain into you no know, or exploiting now it's something like this it's exploiting the human brain mm, efficiency on a machine okay right? next Uh, let's have a quick look on how this brain and uh, because neuroscience is the one which is at the background of it and on top of this it's a multidisciplinary project when i say neuromorphic computing neuroscience electronic computer science uh, uh, human physiology everything comes into picture right so it's a multidisciplinary uh, area which mean this neuromorphic computing itself has uh, people from different domain right uh, wherein in order to come up with an efficient powerful neurochips okay when you take a memory sorry you need to take a brain you come across different sectors or different section of your brain responsible for different operations so in fact this is what we have been discussing earlier some portion of the brain would be connected with the emotions some portion of the brain would be connected with the planning some with the input output motor nerves means uh, some you sometime when you keep your finger on your uh, heart or red heart plate the next moment immediately you remove your hands these are with the motor nerves right sensory nerves movement vision language coordination all this you could see uh, 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 different type of uh, i mean different uh, operations is being associated with different neuron sectors in my brain and one more thing there is one thing called as hypothalamus in our brain in fact uh, this hypothalamus is something like uh, Uh, gps um uh, normally there was one article some one year back in the days to come or next 100 years or so there is a possibility that the human being may shed out their hypothalamus why what is the role of hypothalamus if you read that article it says something like this says 10 years back if you want to go somewhere what you generally do is you try to find out the path by inquiring around some people and you go to that place at each and every point you fix up some sort of reference so this should be the path this should be the path like that once you reach there again you will be coming back without even inquiring many people you choose the path and you come out right so how does the human being capable of doing this in fact this hypothalamus is the one which guides that means the hypothalamus stores all the pathway which a particular person move on and get back say usual work let's do something like this um daily you go to your office get back to your home most of the time you your conscious is not required while you drive a car to say i need to go through left right no your brain in fact it not even give pause instruction 
whereas unconsciously you start driving your car or a vehicle to your workplace or to your home which mean already the neurons have been mapped such that it makes a decision what should be the next move left or right or what opposite this sort of mapping had been made in the brain and they are so strong that to connect it got it so that portion this root map has been stored up with this hypothalamus in present days we are going on with the gps device rather we are not even activating this hypothalamus by nature evolution theory anything which is not being activated not in use is expected to shed out over the generation very similar to the tail which is being lost from the human being uh, as per the theory of evolution because they are not in use so it has been shed out so the same thing could happen with hypothalamus that's what the article speaking about right so the human brain has multiple multiple area with the multiple functional uh yeah this is what we are uh, speaking about i i just uh, skip some of this is a typical biological diagram which we use for neurons right so basically a neuron a single cell neuron will have something like dendrites then uh, the cell body what you call it as a soma then axon then the output is uh, pre synaptic terminal all these things um let's quickly understand how does the brain works right or let's try to understand this very simple let me have a brain i mean let's try to understand this brain it has billions of neurons fine now what i'm saying when i'm trying to practice certain say i'm trying to learn a bicycle riding right what happens is the neuron the neuron get connected for a particular pattern say for cycle riding so for every movement like balancing let's may assume that i am balancing on left right or fourth or front right so all this they appropriately excite the nearby neuron like that the nearby neuron get excited more the excitation more will be the stem indirectly in neural network you would have read that it is nothing but the weight of the neuron so weight of the neuron is nothing but more neuron get excited by excited what i mean is the neurotransmitters means neurochemicals which is again nothing but sodium potassium calcium no, sodium potassium Uh, and few more salt right so these are the chemicals these are called as neurotransmitters chemical so they get transmitted via this neuron uh, through multiple path so whichever path get excited most often that path get strengthened up right which mean if i know to ride a cycle then correspondingly a particular neuron pattern would have been strengthened enough to make sure even without your conscious they could execute that particular path right so whenever i want some operation to be carried out then those neurons get excited and they get executed and decision making the same case right so basically the uh, the uh, um, the biological processes whenever a neuron get excited they transmit neurochemicals the neurochemicals which has been transmitted get transferred to the nearby neuron thereby it creates some sort of pattern this neurochemical which is been transmitted from one neuron to the other neuron it's called a synapse means the connectivity established between one neuron and the other neuron more the strength of that connectivity i say more will be the weight 
less the connectivity less with the weight if you would have practiced multiple time the connection would have been so strong say i am practicing uh, uh, a particular job for hundreds of hours which mean i am exciting those pattern of neurons for n number of time and making sure that part get you know so strong that's how the skill set of that particular person come say you take an example of a wood carver the wood carving he ha he has been doing this for quite a long time so the neuron has been trained up in such a way such that it comes up even unknowingly i mean unconsciously that comes out to be his skill set right okay so now we are trying to make a comparison between brain and a chip that is the chipset which is used for computation and the human brain generally if you make a comparison this semiconductor chip is having roughly around 10 raised to the power of 10 transistors i am just comparing uh, with respect to different uh, aspect number of transistors here whereas in the human brain the brain has 10 raised to the power of 11 neurons right 10 raised to the power of 11 neurons next and each and every neuron is expected to have 1 lakh synaptic connections so uh, you can just imagine so 10 raised to the power 11 into 10 raised to the power 5 roughly around 10 raised to the power of 16 synaptic nodes are there the speed of a microchip that is semiconductor chip works with picosecond whereas the speed of a human brain is in microsecond that is why if you give a very huge computation to a human being and a computer the computer computes a bit early the reason is the speed of a microchip or a semiconductor chip processor works in the speed of picoseconds whereas human being it's still in microsecond but there is another huge difference between a human brain and a processor human brain works in parallel computing whereas most of the processor chip they works in serial computing and one more difference the computation power of a brain is nearly 10 times not even 10 times even more than that right around uh, uh, 200 times less than that of Uh, the power consumption by a microchip right something like this if a processor works for hours together you could see the heat get dissipated sometime you could have heard the people who work for a long duration they used to say my head is burning something like that it's actually the heat being generated due to the continuous computation in the brain right so yeah there there are multiple more parameters to be looked in neuroscience i am not uh, uh, no going so deep for the want of time i am just skipping out and uh, then giving yeah this is actually uh, the exact picture of a neuron with synapse connection this has been done in kennedy lab caltech the human brain neuron and its appropriate connection uh, that has been simulated and the picture is the same it looks like something like a galaxy right but uh, the real thing is it's nothing but your neuron and the spot light where you could see here and there are the excitation potential at those point when i say excitation potential it is the voltage in millivolt the human brain generate around 30 millivolt that's how we are mimicking the brain this is called uh, spiking neural network s n n we are just trying to create a very similar spike which would have been created in the neuron of a brain 
via some electronic circuit to produce that 30 millivolt yes so as i said this is uh, the spikes these are the neurotransmitters this is the information being transferred from one neuron to the other neuron uh, so when i say training all those things neurons fire together wire together this is the concept uh, you know what does that mean is when you do a job you could see a couple of neuron get excited quite often you do that it becomes so strong that even without your conscious you could do that activity right uh, so yeah here comes the exact figure of the uh, the power that has been used by the supercomputer it is 28 megawatts whereas the brain uh, brain power is only 20 watts you see what a big difference is here and uh, the speed of the machine is very good, high, but the brain has adaptability. Means the brain can learn from the environment, whereas that future is not available with the computer chips. Now, the point which I am trying to bring in here is the neuromorphic computing processes, whatever you are trying to make is incorporating the futures that are available in the brain including adaptability right so this we have seen a lot and yeah just a small comparison with existing hardwares for ai ml and the neuromorphic computing process the existing machine use one human architecture whereas neuromorphic architectures they use in the neuromorphic computing. In which way they are different? First of all, one human architecture use two type of memory. One for, they split up that memory, one for memory storage and the other one for processing. Whereas here, it's, it's a common, it is used both for processing and the memory remains the same. And one more, as we said, it is a sequential process. Whereas human brain or the neuromorphic computing is a parallel process. You have separated computational and memory. Here, both processing and memory are at the same point. Here, there is a binary instruction. Here, it is a spiking neural network. That means the computation is taken or the computation get activated by the spikes which has been generated there and there. Here the data is binary data. Here the data is spikes, which is basically an analog signal. Here it is a synchronous system. It is an unsynchronous system, which is event driven system. When an event happens, then alone the activation takes place. Uh, yeah, so Right. So, how can you make a computer that works like a human brain? Simple. What we said is, we are trying to create this active or activation potential via generating a neuron by its behavior on silicon. So, basically, we are trying to create silicon neuron. So, it can incorporate two futures one the spatial property other one temporal property so it can incorporate these two properties and then it can bring in um, the properties that has been available with the normal view so spatial property refers to the point where the activation takes place temporal property refers to time much which the activation takes place. When you collide these two, you come up with the characteristics of the neuron. So typically, the spike which has been generated in the brain, human brain, for any activity uh, depends upon this spiking potential. 
so you could see the spike potential goes something like this the top most it will be somewhere around the 30 50 volt so for every excitation you could see there is an amount of 30 millivolt being generated and as i said yeah this memster is now taking part uh, for most of the applications in fact instead of using mos for uh, chipset making most of the neuromorphic ic are being done with membristors yes so what is the added advantage as we were speaking about uh, it speaks on probabilistic computations it speaks on the edge computation and it speaks on uh, more comfortable ambiguity based computation flexibility non linear thinking pattern which is being used by the brain is also being incorporated in the neuromorphic machine things like that right where are they being used as i said uh, different companies we have the list also let's try to look into this so intel ibm all these people are working on it so already intel came up with the second chipset that is logi 2 which is including the um, cognitions human uh, human cognition in that um, and it is also trying to come up with creation of artificial skin and for uh, prosthetic limbs in all this they are using the neuromorphic computing in fact uh, it, it's a great research going on these two areas particularly artificial skin and uh, this prosthetic limb creation they are using this neuromorphic cognitions uh, and uh, in fact they have achieved a, a lot more uh, in the neuromorphic computing ic manufacture ibm come up with one more processor what do you call it as true not eh? true not this is again very equivalent to that of loki and it was launched in 2014 it tried to make uh, 64 million neurons uh, with the 16 billion synapse connections. In fact, uh, the US Air Force also uh, come up with a neuromorphic supercomputer, what do you call it as a blue raven, and that's also going on. So particularly, they are used for uh, drones, less energy demanding drones. This person, uh, Carver and Mead. In fact, uh, he is the one who coined the name neuromorphic somewhere in 1980s. And right now they work with a huge project. It is an academic institution. Uh, they work with a huge project, what do you call it as a human brain project, HBP, which has been funded by the European Union. Uh, and uh, this HBP has led to two major neuromorphic initiatives. One is Pinnaker. This is one more important project which is being done. And another one is Brain Scalers. These two are in the process of creating a brain. Right? This Pinnaker and the Brain Scale 2. That is the version 2. So here you could see this is for uh, the human brain supercomputer with 1 million processor that has been switched at the same time. Uh, in fact, uh, this has been established uh, in the year 2018. You could see the picture over here, uh, typically mimicking the human brain, most of its activity. The second one, as we said, the brain scale two, a single chip uh, setup, what you could notice here, a single chip, uh, which involve FPGA, all those things, in order to generate uh, such huge value of synapse. As I was mentioning, uh, this Intel is in the process of making this Loki 2 for generating neuromorphic computing. In fact, uh, compared to Loki 1, it has 10 times speed higher, 60 times interchip bandwidth, 1 million neurons, 15 cross, I mean 15 times uh, resource density, 3D scaling all this full programmability in the neuron model 
enhanced learning adaptation everything has been there in fact you can there is a video on this also um, if time permits you can even uh, google it and check it over with respect to india uh, we could see mostly iit delhi iisc bangalore iit chennai they have their own lab uh, i could project you a couple of labs which work on this neuromorphic crime computing or brain inspired computing or uh, um, like that center for brain computing they have it in different name basically they work on um, neuroscience and making a hardware for brain computing iit delhi uh, they demonstrate uh, this brain inspired artificial neuron for accurate and efficient neuromorphic ai system so this was uh, uh, somewhere in 2021 the latest one which they have used a couple of adcs dss controllers microcontrollers oxram all this they have used and come up with uh, a bio inspired artificial neuron and this was the one which uh, i was speaking about uh, this elon musk project um, they try to create a chip and uh, implant that in the brain in fact uh, it's uh, still under clinical trial with animals uh, what you could see is uh, they are planning for using this for parkinson diseases particularly neurological disorders whenever you have such thing um they plan to use this in a great way um for neurological disorders this neurochips and in 2020 they have uh, implanted this chip in a pig called as gertrud and uh, in fact they were monitoring that also and there are some of interesting videos also available probably you can also go through that and apart from this there are many universities who have invested a huge amount on this neuro lab or the neuromorphic computing labs uh, so here the investment is majorly on sensors to capture the uh, neuro signals or the neurotransmitter signals analyze them in fact iit chennai has that also uh, you have iit chennai iisc they have uh, the uh, electrodes which could capture the neuro signals bio neuro signals in fact uh, this was uh, pennsylvania state university and they have a beautiful neuromorphic computing laboratory over there and uh, globally now as we said uh, it is more like an interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary projects Uh, people who work on in fact uh, it's a very good example of uh, coming up with very good work on multidisciplinary so people from different domain can join together and work uh, efficiently to come up with this um, it's more like a transdisciplinary interdisciplinary projects so again Uh, there is one more interesting work which is uh, happening with uh, uh, Linköping University Sweden. Uh, this Sweden they have concentrated more on creating organic transistors, probably semiconductor transistors we are comfortable with, particularly for uh, uh, mimicking the neurons. They come up with what you call it as um, this OECT, organic electrochemical transistors. uh basically this are used for short term storage transmission and computation uh so that's that's also one university which is working a lot on this organic electronics and they support a lot with the spiking neural network architectures and as we discussed yeah uh, definitely this neuromorphic computing is going to make a revolutionary change in multiple domains starting from healthcare sector economy environment human uh, potential in all the way you could see there will be a huge uh, market on this uh, particularly in healthcare like artificial limbs artificial retina medical imaging prediction diagnosis all this 
and uh, uh, particularly on the social health care with respect to economy it is used for predicting the financial markets major financial markets forecasting all these things uh, um, this neuromorphic computing chips could play an important role uh, in the sphere of environment it is used for uh, capturing the data based on that monitoring and thereby helping us to take a right decision to combat any disasters right destructive changes that's going to happen like uh, volcano eruption huge flood uh, earthquake for all this predictions this require uh, neuromorphic computing can play an important role human potential basically for self learning machines to create self learning machines and uh, incorporating that in the robots and use it in the place where the human approachability is very very less particularly on the polar regions southern poles north poles region that you have an extreme weather condition which is not conducive for the human being and definitely this could play an important role there and one more uh, you could see this uh, western sydney university uh, wsu they have a, a lab set up for neural morphic systems and there are multiple equipment in that also probably you can go to that icns lab and check it out and this is the lab which i was speaking about uh, in iisc bangalore you have neuron ics lab means neurally inspired reconfigurable intelligent circuit and systems um, they they have actually taken the help of this wsu in fact uh, there is a professor uh, akur uh, he is a passed out of that uh, western sydney university so they were all working at the same thing like uh, and the reconfigurable computing mimicking or modeling the neuron like that i could see multiple projects going on in this area in fact you could also find the more papers being published on this neuro uh, model neuron modeling from this iisc bangalore and with respect to chennai what you have is something like uh, center for computational brain research you could also see that uh, which is um, mainly speaks about the brain inspired hardware software architecture creation in fact they used to conduct some workshops also but due to this covid um, now they they don't do that but otherwise around one week they used to do that both iisc as well as iit madras this is from michigan state university university of michigan you could see uh, neural uh, neural circuit and the memory lab you have there particularly which is focusing on this and apart from <coughs> academic side you could see almost major companies they have ventured into this particular neuromorphic computing domain starting from intel ibm samsung accenture all these people they are exploiting this for multiple applications particularly on uh, voice control for vehicle and Uh, gestures recognition touchless interface onboard intelligence assists with respect to robo for all this they are going beyond this ai and using this neuromorphic computing techniques and one more uh, with respect to imac belgium uh, which is known for its uh, semiconductors this imac belgium has also developed this self learning neuromorphic chip right uh, which has the capability of self learning adaptability that has been incorporated on this ic neuromorphic ic and it is being used with respect to music domain and another uh, important thing is like uh, us uh, the defense that is tarpa you would have heard about that defense advanced research project agency and they use this synapse program for advanced brain inspired computing they use this for uh, uh, defense purpose right to a great extent and definitely this uh, you know neuromorphic computing 
he is expected to be the future wherein uh, the members this quantum computing all this are going to be a part of it the beauty of the quantum quantum computing is uh, it does simultaneously uh, it it can store a lot of process more information than the traditional computers and it also comes with very high speed um, this quantum computers they use qubits rather than bits which is of 0 and 1 so what are the advantage it is efficient low latency adaptive processing rapid learning all this are the beauty of this neuromorphic computer so benefit it could be applied in all smart products uh, which could land up with uh, natural interactions increased autonomy means uh, it, it itself can take most of the decisions and it can go for continuous optimization uh, in the sense you can see that it can keep on improvising certain parameters so as to optimize the metrics like throughput power speed all this this are some of the biological thing how you model the behavior of neuron spiking activity in fact that uh, uh, you could see that an equivalent circuit can be created for this sort of spiking behavior and that could be included in fact uh, you would have learned uh, gnn artificial neural network gsn and spiking neural networks this spiking neural network is the one which is being used in neuromorphic computing this gnn normally used in ai ai based computations and it also works with the, what do you call it as sttp people call it as uh, spike time dependent plasticity which mean the time at which the spikes get generated based upon that they get information on uh, how the computation what amount of computation all those information can be grabbed from that yeah that's it uh, uh, i i will try to give uh, at the outset what is this neuromorphic computing what is happening with respect to this neuromorphic computing um uh, both the international level and the national level and in fact uh, it doesn't require a huge amount of investment again um, anyway the forthcoming what you could see most of the people would have uh, incorporated the facility for iot uh, ai ml just as an extension of that you could see there are hundreds and hundreds of papers being published in the area of neuromorphic computing in fact with respect to india a very few universities academic sites work on this uh, probably and this could be uh, those people for whom this is little bit new can start igniting this with a very small mini projects that could be uh, more focused on this particular area forthcoming area uh, which could help us in understanding the future trend for creating a high speed computing energy efficient computing systems yeah uh, that's all from my side thanks for uh, your patient listening i am ready to take up questions in this yeah dr saktivelu sir thank you very much yeah thank you it was a wonderful talk uh, so participants uh, if there are any questions then you can please post them yeah uh, there is one question uh, okay i could see what is the role of vlsi exactly uh, it's actually uh, i have conducted one with uh, um, a 10 days workshop on this neuromorphic computing uh, basically whatever we speak here it's supposed to come as a hardware uh, for computation say for example when i say um, i i am mimicking the characteristics of a neuron then i have to come up with a circuit for mimicking the behavior of the spikes both with respect to spatial domain as well as uh, time domain right so 
in fact there are many many circuits which has been working on creating a neuron apart from that there is an in, uh, enough amount of computations which need to be computed using the spikes and you have the circuits for that wherein it could be an analog based circuit or digital based circuit these circuits need to be synthesized in your normal chip processor only and i say processor basically it need to go through the vlsi processing technique only so start from uh, something if it is in digital you need to code them via a hdl language then go for simulation synthesis optimization make that as an efficient chip if it is going to be an analog then you are supposed to go through a typical uh no the yeah, full custom ic design and sometimes it could be a mixed mode system design wherein you could incorporate both i believe i would have answered your question if you have any more questions please let me know okay participants yes, any yes, other sir. questions thank you sir kindly post it Uh, sir most of the slides were you know really interesting Thank and in you. particular there was a slide uh, where it actually mentioned that uh, neurons that fire together work together yes uh, you know uh, is it uh, you know directly related to parallel computing can you please you know throw some light on that particular statement uh, i found it really interesting so true yeah. true that is Uh, actually that line has a context with uh, the strength of the neuron uh, if we were working with uh, an uh, um, this neural networks we would have read each and every neuron has a weight this actual weight refers here how much strength it has the strength refers here to the amount of biologically it is referring the the synapse connection the strength of the synapse connection when i say strength of the synapse connection it refers to the neurochemicals being transmitted at every time so that's what i uh, i was giving an example say suppose uh, we were trying to walk through middle of a field uh, quite often i mean uh, say we were quite often walking through that field so what happens you could see on both the sides a green pasture except the path which you use for walking very similar to this when i make certain operation very frequently repetitively the neurons which are being connected to that they get excited in that particular path so that makes me that makes that path to be more uh, strengthened so that's what we mean here uh, um, the uh, neurons get excited together they wire together to make it so strong otherwise actually parallel processing refers uh, parallelly i can one portion of my brain can work with a certain process the another portion of my brain can work with certain other process say something like i hear a music and then still go ahead for driving in fact i share my workload such that the parallel processing is taking place so these are the capabilities of the human brain yeah okay thank you sir thank you very much thank you thank you uh hello sir yeah yeah please yeah, uh, sir uh, like uh, what should be the uh, frequency of operation of each uh, uh, like uh, computing cycle uh, oh, in case of this um, like uh, directly it relates to the speed of operation of the system requirement correct. for that correct uh, uh, see actually what happens by speed what we mentioned there was it is with respect to the maximum speed of response from a human brain so naturally it would be in microsecond but what we were speaking about a digital circuit when we take that speed will be in picosecond logic gates so again that speed could vary based upon the application say the printer speed need not be same as the speed of or the operating frequency of your processor probably this will be in kilohertz whereas this will be in gigahertz these generally the speed is decided by the application on which we are going to work on but here what do i mean here is i am just trying to compare the maximum speed of operation with respect to human brain and a 
processor chip in that context i am referring hope i would thank you sir thank you sir thank yeah yeah thank you thank you thank you very much sir uh, it you. was very kind enough and an informative talk given by you sir i think all the participants have gained the knowledge in this particular topic neuromorphic uh, computing thank you so much sir thank you thank you thank you all for your patient listening thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir. thank you thank you thank you dear participants the attendance link and the quiz link is shared in the chat box please fill it quiz link will be shared shortly please fill it it is a mandatory task it is one of the mandatory task fill all the sessions session 1 session 2 session 3 all the links you need to fill the attendance link and also the quiz link which will be shared shortly the quiz link will be shared shortly the quiz link is shared the quiz link of today is shared it is shared once again kindly fill the quiz link and the attendance forms attendance forms session 1 session 2 session 3 kindly fill all the attendance links and the quiz link sir it's visible okay sir okay sir Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, yesterday quiz link was posted, madam. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday is ma'am. Every day, every day we post the attendance link and the quiz link at the end of the day. Each day, every day, it is will be posted in the chat box. Yesterday we didn't fill, madam. Uh, we don't know that uh, quiz link will be posted. Uh. ma'am it is a mandatory task to fill the quiz link and the attendance form in order to get the certificate okay. ma'am if possible yesterday is kindly share uh yeah i will uh, talk to the coordinator and let you know minakshi madam okay ma'am thank you thank you okay okay मैं सर जी सपोर्टर और वर्कर को कह रहा हूं
Sir, you can leave if you have finished the attendance, filling the attendance form and the quiz. You can leave the meeting. Yes, sir, you can leave the meeting if you have finished the quiz.
I request all the participants to leave the meeting if they have submitted the quiz. I request all the participants to leave the meeting if they have submitted the quiz and the attendance link of today's sessions. Thank you, sir. Once again, I request all the participants to leave the meeting if they have completed the quiz. Excuse me. Please send me the quiz link once again, please. Then, sir. Okay, quiz link Madam, is already. Please, uh, could you send me once again the quiz link? Quiz link yeah. is uh, quiz link is sent, sir. Quiz link. You can see me in the chat box just oh, now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Ah, uh, thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Sir, you can leave the yes, meeting sir. if you have finished the quiz. If you have finished the quiz, you can leave the meeting. Okay. 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 Okay.